Welcome, Mindsetters, to another session of, Ma of Learn Extra. Guys, I hope you guys are ready and you guys are going to pay attention because there's a lot to do today. Kurs, what are we going to be doing today, Ms. Hashira? Well, just the same as Dina, guys, we're going to be doing trig revision. And, you know, there's just so much to go over when we do trig. So I hope that you all get your questions through to Ty on the Facebook page. And uh, I know it's, it's a section that we get tons and tons of questions for. So grade 11s, I hope that you're on the ball today and get your question answered. All right. So while Natasha makes her way across, mm -hmm. guys, make sure, make sure you know the drill. Get on the page, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra and get chatting to me. And guys, I have a calculator and a labeler to give away. So guys, make sure, make sure you get those posts in. And plus, if you don't get those posts in, we can't help you. And if we can't help you, well, no one gets help. But anyway, guys, I'm going to hand this over to Natasha. But before I do that, Send, send a quick shout out to Liberty. Thank you for sponsoring this. And Tashi, take it away. Thanks, Taz. Uh, Ty. <laughs> Ty's, yeah. <laughs> Ty's our guy for today. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us on the Grade 11 show. And just like Dino was doing with the Grade 10s, we're going to be looking at trigonometry revision. Now, in Grade 11, and really throughout the syllabus from Grade 10 all the way to Grade 12, trigonometry is a huge, huge section. So, and I know it's one that um, we often get people struggling with, uh, you know, certain definitions and identities and that kind of thing. So, if that's you, then this lesson is just for you and this is your time to catch up. So, the first thing I want to do is just go over some of the basic identities and these are things that you do need to know. Um, I mean, certain, some of these I give you on the formula sheet, but it's good to just know it in your head because it just becomes so much quicker when you need to recall it, okay? One of the most important ones is sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one. So that's one we use often when we deal with trig identities. And I think everyone knows this one by now. Sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one. And remember, you can manipulate this so I, if I wanted to find the value of just sine squared theta, all I'll do is take the cos squared over to the right-hand side. So it's 1 minus cos squared theta. All right. And similarly, if you wanted cos squared theta, you simply take the sine squared to the other side. Okay, so that's really one of the fundamental identities, one that you all need to remember, okay, even though it is given to you. All right, the other one, tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. This becomes very helpful in certain identities. Remember, identities where you're proving left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, and then some of the ones that are not so common, but it's good to know, especially when you're doing reduction formula, and sometimes they also put it into um, identity questions. And that's just sine of any negative angle is equal to negative sine theta, but the provisor here is that theta, the theta that we're talking about, the angle that we're talking about is acute. Okay, remember acute angles are less than 90 degrees. So sine of any negative angle that's less than 90 degrees will be negative sine theta, okay? And guys, it's very important. The angle has to be, theta has to be between 0 and 90. Please remember this because if you don't bear that in mind and you use this just as you feel like, you can get something, you know, especially when they give you um, numbers to work with, like sine negative 120, you can get the signs wrong, okay? So here, when we're talking about sine of a negative angle, and for the rest of these as well, we're only talking about angles between naught and 90 degrees, all right? Then, still carrying on with negative angles, sine of theta plus or minus 360, again, bearing in mind that theta is an acute angle, is equal to just sine of theta, and then sine of 90 minus theta, this is the famous cofunction relationship. Sine of 90 minus theta is cos of theta. And then while we're just on that point, let me just point out that this could very well have been sine of 90 plus theta. And then sine of 90 plus theta would still be cos theta, but here you've got to be careful of your signs. All right. And sine of 90 plus theta is actually 
if we draw our quadrants, it's in the second quadrant. Okay, remember your cars diagram? So sine of 90 plus theta would be an angle in the second quadrant and sine is positive in that quadrant. Therefore, cos, which is the co-function, will just be positive cos theta. Okay, so you always take it from the first one. So if I'm starting with sine and I'm looking in the second quadrant, I know sine is always positive there, so therefore it would just be positive cos theta. All right, then we have um, cos of negative theta. Remembering once again that we're talking about angles that are between 0 and 90 degrees. Cos of negative theta would just be positive cos theta. Similarly to the sine one, cos of theta plus or minus 360 degrees will also just be cos theta. And finally, cos of 90 minus theta using your co-functions again will be sine theta. Now remember, 90 minus theta is in the first quadrant, but if we did what we did in the other example, where I change it to cos 90 plus theta, right? 90 plus is in the second quadrant, and we know that cos is negative in that quadrant, so therefore this would be negative sine theta as the co-ratio. Okay, so remember that you always take it from the first one that's given. And because cos is negative in the second quadrant, this wouldn't just be sine of theta, it would be negative sine theta. The best way to really uh, prove to yourself that these 90 plus and 90 minuses work is just to take real angles and work with them. Okay, and you can prove them to yourself. Uh, one thing I want to mention to you guys today is that there is no challenge question because, I mean, we are revising for exams and I know that you guys have tons of questions that you need answered. So hopefully we'll take one of your questions that you send through on the Facebook page and do that as our challenge question, but there's no challenge question for today. I'm going to move on to our first example for this lesson. All right, and it's using a trig reduction formula. We have to simplify without using a calculator. Remember, if they say without using a calculator, you will not get marks if you use a calculator. So if you just put cos of 150 into the calculator and get your answers root 3 over 2, you're not going to get any marks. Okay, you need to show step-by-step -step working. All right, so let's have a look at A. All right, so this is number 1A. We've got cos of 150... Now, the first thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to rewrite this using reduction formula. So cos of 150, I can rewrite as cos of 180 minus 30 degrees. Because 180 minus 30 is 150. So I've really just rewritten 150 degrees. Tan of 225 is tan 180 plus 45 degrees, all right, and then at the bottom here, in the denominator, let's have a look, we've got sine of negative 60, now remember what I showed you when we started this, a little revision section we did, sine of a negative angle, as long as that angle is between 0 and 90 degrees, will become negative sine of that angle, so sine of negative 60 is going to become negative sine 60. Okay, and cos of 480, now if you look at 480, that is bigger than 360 degrees. So we first use the 360 degrees to try and reduce that. All right, so how do we do that? I can rewrite cos of 480 as, and I'll show you on your calculator because I'm sure most of you are dashing for that by now. All right, so I want to find out um, 360 plus what gives me 480. So I say 480 minus 360, and I get 120 degrees. So therefore, I can rewrite 480 as 360. I can rewrite that as 360 plus 120. Okay, all right, and now we're going to simplify all of that a little bit and just show you um, how we get to maybe just a single ratio. Cos of 180 minus 30, we know that cos 180 minus 
using your cos diagram. 180 minus is in the second quadrant, so cos in the second quadrant is negative, so that's going to be negative sine 30 times tan of 180 plus 45, that's in the third quadrant, we know that tan is positive there, so, sorry, this, oopsie, my mistake here, we were dealing with cos and there's no reason to change from cos to sine, there's no co-functions there. So that was just careless, so that's just going to stay as cos of 30. Back to the tan. Tan of 180 plus 45 in the third quadrant, tan is positive, so that's just going to be tan of 45. And usually when you're dealing with reduction questions where they give you angles, usually your angles are going to be um, special angles, or they end up being things that you can reduce uh, into co-functions and you can cancel out. Okay, all of these 30, 45, 60 so far, those are all special angles. Now, with the cos of 360 plus 120, 360 plus an angle is really just a circle, so it's really just taking you back to the same point. So, cos of 360 plus 120 is just cos of 120. All right, so I'm just showing you on the side here how we can actually reduce this. So cos 360 plus 120 is just cos 120. I can rewrite that as cos 180 minus 60. Cos of 180 minus, that's in the second quadrant, so that's going to be negative, and it's going to be cos 60. All right, so we basically took the cos of 480, broke it down into 360 plus 120, and then broke that 120 down a little bit further to give us 180 minus 60, which is just negative cos 60 degrees. Okay, now you can do your special angles, and at this point you can use your calculator to do special angles, because it does give you the exact answers. All right, cos of 30, if we first work out our signs, minus divided by minus is a plus, plus divided by minus is a minus, so overall our answer is going to be negative. Cos of 30, use your calculator if you want to, or if you've done this too much like me, then you know the answer in your head. Cos of 30 is going to be root 3 over 2. Tan of 45 is going to be 1. Sine of 60 is also root 3 over 2. And then cos of 60 is a half. Okay, so what's going to happen? We see that we've got root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2. Those are just going to cancel. And then we've got minus 1 divided by a half. Now, remember, when you divide with by a fraction, you're going to tip in time. So this is just going to become minus 2. Okay, so that entire expression, look, what we started with, that entire expression simplified to just an answer of minus 2. Okay, if you want to, guys, now remember, you have to show all of your working with this, but if you want to, you can just quickly check that in your calculator. Make sure you've got the right answer so that when you get to the end, you know that your answer is correct. And then obviously if it doesn't match up with what you've got from the calculator, you can go back and check and see where you've made a mistake. But very important if they say without using a calculator, which they generally will in a question like this, you need to show all of your steps. Okay, so I'm going to make like Houdini and disappear for a few minutes while uh, Itty is going to come back after the break and join you guys for one or two more questions. And after that, I will be joining Ty once again to take you through to the end of the show. Okay, Ty, so back to you. All right. So guys, make sure, make sure you keep getting those questions in. So while she does her Houdini impersonation and does a little hocus pocus and vanishes, make sure, make sure, make sure you go grab a little snack, whatever you need to, so you don't have to get up again. Because guys, you need to pay attention for these sessions. So guys, make sure you stay tuned and we'll see you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you had a nice little break. You got whatever you needed to do out of your system so you didn't have to fidget or go up or move anywhere so you guys can make sure that you can stick around and pay attention because, guys, you don't forget, I still have to give away this Casio calculator and this labeler. So please get those questions in. The page is a bit quiet right now, but, guys, 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 keep posting. But for now, I've got a special guest. Mr. Itty is standing in front of Natasha Quick. So, Mr. Itty, take it away. Thank you. Um, I'm going to proceed from where uh, Natasha left off. The next example is about uh, 
yeah, where you're given information that says if sine 34 is equal to t, determine in terms of t cos of 56. The second question is tan of minus 34. Right, we just scroll down here. Okay, we did say cos of 56. Pick up on there. Cos of 56. Now, Atasha, uh, Natasha earlier on mentioned that uh, there is a relationship between the, the angles that are complementary, the core functions. And if I can just remind you quickly, she said, if you have cos of theta, it will basically be the same as sine of 90 degrees minus theta. That is one uh, good thing to remember, and we are going to use it here, because we have got an acute an angle already that is 56 degrees. Simply, we are going to say this is the same as sine of 90 degrees minus 56 degrees. And that becomes sine of uh, 34 degrees. And if you remember what the question was saying, basically it was saying, write uh, cos 56 in terms of t. Which means what we have is simply what we had there, and it's just t. The answer is t there. We can move straight to the next question. The next question says tan of minus 34. Tan minus 34 degrees. There comes a negative angle again. I personally do not li like it when, uh, when I, you know, I mean, don't like the negative angles, and I quickly convert them to positive angles. For every negative angle, there is a corresponding positive angle. Let's bring that to light. If I have an angle that is uh, minus theta there, we, know, we can see that it's in the fourth quadrant, but this was measured in that direction. Now, if I just do a full revolution going in the opposite direction, I'm simply adding, adding uh, 360. Then I come back to the same point. Now, which means if I have tan of minus 34 degrees, I can simply add 360, and I'm at the same point. Yes, I'm in the fourth quadrant, but I like it when it's a positive angle. So it's going to be the same as tan 360 degrees minus 34 degrees. Suddenly, this looks like the reduction formulas that you are, you, are, you, are, you are familiar with. And one thing about reduction formulas is that you're going to ask yourself two questions all the time. You're going to ask yourself, in which quadrant am I? In this case, you are in the fourth quadrant. The ratio that I have, how does it look there? I, what is the sign of that ratio? You remember again, uh, Natasha did point out what I call all students take coffee, that in this case, tan is only positive in that quadrant. Oh, not only there, of course, all of them are positive there. In the second and the fourth quadrant, tan is negative. Therefore, if this is in the fourth quadrant, I am expecting my sign to be negative. Yes, the intention is to reduce this non-acute angle into an acute angle. So I am, I am wanting to say tan 34. But what about the sign? We agreed that in the fourth quadrant, the sign is going to be negative. Then I simply put a minus in front of that. Of course, a tan, one of the uh, identities that you are going to always remember, have to remember is the one that says tan theta is the same as sine of theta divided by cos 
of theta. And at this point in time, we already know what is sine of 34. Not a problem. But there goes the cos of 34 degrees. We, haven't, we have not determined that yet. To get that, we have to remember another identity, which says sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals to 1. So that means wherever we see cos of an angle, we can simply relate it to the sine. We can simply say cos squared theta equals to 1 minus sine squared theta. And to get cos theta, we have to, square, uh, to get the square root of both sides. In that case, we end up with cos theta equals to square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. All smiles now, because we have determined sine 34. We know it's t, and we can simply go and substitute it in there. We do have uh, cos theta, suddenly. All right? So if we move slightly down here, um, we are now going to have, if I pick my pen again there, we are now going to have minus sine 34, we said it's t. Where we see cos 34, we are simply going to put square root of 1 minus t squared. Yes, of course, uh, this, whenever you square root, there is a plus answer and a negative answer. In this case, we're going to put plus and minus because we were not given a specific, uh, this is not a specific solution, it's more like a general, you know, solution. Uh, then we end up with two answers, which is t over root of 1 minus t squared, or uh, minus t over uh, square root of 1 minus t squared. Okay. Just to retrace these steps, there's a lot, yes. Okay. So basically, that wraps up these questions. There are two ways you can write out the answer to that. Yeah, to that one. All right, I think I must just add one more question, uh, which, will be, which will look like this. Let's just go. All right, if we have... I talked about, you heard me talk about a general solution and uh, a specific solution. Usually when you have a specific solution, you will be given the, 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 the domain within which your angle is, I mean, uh, your function is defined. You'll be given theta is greater than 0 to 180 or minus 180 to positive 180, something like that. So let's say we have cos of theta multiplied by... Uh, sine of theta minus 1, let's say, that is equal to 0. And we ask you to determine the value of theta, the general solution. Just give us the general solution to this. So this is already factorized. You either have this is equal to 0, or the other factor is equal to 0. So if you say cos of theta equal to 0, or sine of theta minus 1 equal to 0. So you end up with, with two streams of solution here. If I draw a line there, so from this side, this is a general solution. Now this means uh, I have to think of adding several revolutions coming back to the same point. You must have seen that before. So what cosi, I mean, what is the angle that makes the, uh, the, the cosine ratio to be equal to zero. You will remember quickly, uh, if I can draw this to, the cosine function takes that shape. It starts off at zero degrees, you've got a value of one. Then at 90 degrees, at 90 degrees, 
and 270 degrees, you've got zero. Your ratio is zero. And at 180, it's minus one, obviously. Okay, so I'm just addressing this first factor. So the first factor, therefore, will be uh, where theta is equal to 90 degrees plus you could come as many times as possible to the same point by doing revolutions. So how do I represent that? I simply say 360 degrees, well, let's multiply it by K. Okay, so K is basically, you need to show that K uh, is an element of integers. Okay. So that is basically the general solution to this. Uh, and you can, if it was specific, they would have to tell you between which uh, two values of theta, like 300 minus 360 to 360 or not. Then you would have to find those angles in that interval. The other stream to my question, I can rearrange this. It would be sine of theta equals to one. And if I remind you quickly, the graph looks like that, uh, where this is 1 and this is 0, and it's 1 at 90 degrees again. All right. So in this case, our, our general solution is still going to look the same. We're going to say theta is 1, I mean, it's 90 degrees, plus it doesn't matter how many times we come to the same point. And of course, k is an element of integers. Right, that's how, that's how far I wanted to take uh, these questions. And uh, yeah. All right. So All guys, right. I hope you had a nice little session there. Are you good? Yeah. All, All right. right. So yeah. guys, <laughs> I hope you guys are paying attention. And you guys, I'm seeing a lot of guys posting on the page. I like it. I like it. I like it. Keep going. Keep going. Because guys, we're going to be picking up your questions and we're going to be using them in the third segment of the show. So guys, make sure you keep getting those questions. And if you need help, if you're lost anywhere. And guys, yes, I'm giving away the Casio calculators. And by the way, so you know, these calculators and this labeler will go to the, to the students who not only just post on the page, but also help other students. So the more you post, and the more you help out, the more you answer questions, the higher your chances of actually getting one of these sent to you. So guys, make sure, make sure, make sure you keep posting. But for now, I'm gonna see you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, to this grade 11 revision session. I hope you're ready. hope you've got your pens, pads, and notepads out so you guys can write notes. But guys, 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 please, please, please pay attention. And remember, keep posting, and then you can win one of these. And I just want to say a quick shout-out to Grace. Thank you. Thank you for saying I look good. But hey, Natasha's also looking good. That <laughs> outfit's cute. But anyway, anyway, back to school. So guys, Natasha, back to you. Thanks, Ty. All right, so uh, guys, we had Itty during, well, before I came on, just taking you through to a bit of uh, general solutions, and I think it was a little bit of reduction or something like that we did as well. So I saw on the Facebook page a couple of viewers saying, please can we do some identities? So we are here to please you, and we are going to look at an identity question. So here you are asked to prove all right, and I'll bring that up for you. And some of you are saying that we are going a little bit too fast, but guys, remember, we have been doing trig for the entire term. So all we're really doing now in the last few lessons, I think it's two weeks or so until exams, is we're really just revising. And that's why we are going a little bit faster because there's quite a lot to cover. I mean, we've covered a lot over the last few weeks in trig, and that's why the lesson is really going much faster, and we're not really paying that much uh, attention on theory because we have already. All right, so... We have to prove left-hand side is equal to right-hand side, and they give you this expression. And we've got to prove that that entire left-hand side is equal to 1. First thing we do is we work with the more complicated side, or the side that we can do more things to. And in this case, the side that we can do more things to is obviously the left-hand side. There's not really much we can do to the 1. All right, so we start with the left-hand side. And we're just going to simplify it as much as possible and see how far we can go. 
All right, what I'm going to do, and there are many different ways you can approach this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change tan squared to sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Remember, right at the top of the lesson, I said to you, si tan of theta sine over cos, so we're just using our identity. So I changed tan squared theta to sine squared over cos squared theta. In the first bracket, we've also got a minus sine squared theta, so we just add that in. All right. And then in the second bracket, I'm just going to take it down exactly as it is. We've got cos squared theta all over sine squared theta plus 1. All right, so that's what we've done to uh, the numerator. If you want to, we can change the tan squared to sine squared over cos squared as well, or we can do that later, but I'm going to change it now, but it really doesn't matter if you keep it as tan squared and change it later on. So remember, tan of theta is sine over cos, therefore tan squared will be sine squared over cos squared. All right. Now, if we look at the numerator, we've got two brackets, both with fractions in them. So your first thought should be to try and simplify that by finding an LCD in each of the brackets. Okay, well, that's my first thought. Maybe your first thought is, let's time this out, which you can do. I mean, there's nothing wrong with foiling these brackets, you know, timesing inners, outers, and firsts, and all of that. But when you do that, you're going to get four terms, and sometimes I find that pupils can get a little bit careless with what they're multiplying. So I prefer not to multiply the brackets out, but you can do that. Okay. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to find an LCD in each of the brackets. In the first bracket, my LCD is cos squared theta. So I'm going to get sine squared theta minus sine squared theta times cos squared theta. Remember, this term just comes from the fact that I'm finding an LCD within the first bracket. So I'm putting everything over cos squared theta. All right, that's our first bracket. And then the second bracket, which it doesn't seem like I'm going to have space to fit on this little side, so I'm going to put it in front of this bracket here. Our LCD is sine squared, so it's going to become... So everything is going to be over sine squared theta. All right, and we're going to get cos squared theta plus sine squared theta all over sine squared theta. Okay, so guys, all I did here was that's the simplification of the second bracket. All right, we found an LCD of sine squared theta, and so we get cos squared theta plus sine squared theta all over sine squared theta, and then we've got our bottom bit, which I'm just going to write here as divide by, or you can leave it all over. There really is no hard and fast rule here. So it's divided by sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Okay, now hopefully you all can see that fundamental identity which we spoke about when we did a little bit of revision at the top of the lesson. Cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1. So I'm going to replace the numerator in that bracket with 1. Keep the denominator sine squared. Don't drop your denominator. All right, so cos squared plus sine squared gave us 1, and that's over sine squared theta. Then what I'm going to do in this other bracket is I can see that there's a common factor of sine squared theta. So if I take that common factor out, I'm going to be left with 1 minus cos squared theta. All right, and then that's all over cos squared theta, and then we're dividing by that same expression that we're going to bring down. Okay, so let's just go through what we've done because it's looking quite complicated now, okay? Firstly, within our brackets, we found an LCD. The first bracket gave me sine squared theta minus sine squared theta times cos squared theta all over cos squared theta. From that bracket, I took out my common factor of sine squared in the numerator, 
and I got 1 minus cos squared theta, and that's all over cos squared theta. The second bracket, when we simplified, we got cos squared plus sine squared all over sine squared, and cos squared plus sine squared is 1, and that's all over sine squared. And then remember, the whole thing is divided by your denominator, which is sine squared over cos squared. All right, we can simplify a little bit further. We can see that in these two uh, brackets, we've got a common numerator and denominator, so we can cancel those out. So this sine squared theta will cancel with that one. All right, and then remember going back to what I showed you right in the beginning of the lesson. If sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1, then 1 minus cos squared is sine squared. So I can replace that 1 minus cos squared with sine squared all over cos squared. And then remember we're dividing by sine squared theta all over cos squared theta. So these two are exactly the same. So it's like saying tan squared divided by tan squared. They cancel each other out, and we're just left with 1. So therefore, we've proved, just as the question asked us, that that entire fraction, when simplified, gives us an answer of 1. All right, guys, I hope that you're following all of that. And uh, I know that we're going through quite a lot of work, but as I said, we are just doing trigonometry revision, so we've got quite a lot to go through. Before I go on to my last question for today, I'm going to go over to Ty and see if any of you have been confused or if you have any questions. So far, mm, nothing much, although they, sh they have been saying that they have been following and they're enjoying the show. Um, with regards to any questions thus far, no. Nothing. Yes. Oh, wait, we have one from Monty. He says tan over 1 plus tan to the po squared um, equals sine, I think he meant A. You know, sometimes this BBM <laughs> talk <laughs> chat. Okay, tan A over 1 plus tan o squared A equals sine A times cos A. All right, so that's a whole new question. So that's mm. an identity that he wants mm. us to prove. Okay, what we're going to do, Ty, is we've got to go through a, th uh, a 2D question just mm. to complete the syllabus. And then if we have time, we'll come back to that question. Alrighty. But I think a big clue for him there is to change all your tans to sine over cos and see how far that gets you. All, all right. right. Okay, so guys, as I was saying, we're trying to get through a lot of stuff and... Uh, all of this is important, so there's really nothing we can leave out. So we've looked, f so far in today's lesson, we've looked at reduction, just reminded you a little bit about some of your identities, and we looked at um, an identity just now, and finally we're going to look at some 2D tricks. So this is also a question that everyone always says, please can you go through, please can you go through, so let's have a look at some trig, trigonometry in 2D. All right. So I'm going to read it and then show you the diagram because everything can't fit uh, on the screen all at once. We've got a diagram, and it's a repre representation of a 25-meter vertical observation tower TB. Two cars, K and L, are on a road. The angle of depression from T to car L is 10 degrees, which I will show you on the diagram. And the angle of elevation from car K to the top of the tower is 17. B, K, and L are all in the same straight line and um, lie on the same horizontal plane as the base of the tower, TB. Okay, so here's a diagrammatic representation of everything that they've told us. All right, we can see that the angle of depression from point T to this car, L, is 10 degrees. And what you'll notice, and uh, we always do it this way, is that we always measure the angle from the horizontal. All right? Okay, guys, so let's just try this. Hopefully you can see the green a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so that angle that tells us is 10 degrees. And as I was saying, it's always measured in the direction of the horizontal. So therefore, we're looking down from T to L. So that's the angle there, that's 10. They also tell us that if you're looking up from car K to the top of the tower, the angle is 17, so that's our angle of elevation. They give us that the length of this is 25, so TB is 25. All right. And then they ask you to calculate the size of angle L. All right. So if you have a look at angle L, it's that one there. 
All right, so it's almost like saying what is the angle of elevation from the car at position L to the top of the tower at point T. All right, this one is quite simple because we know that these two, T in this plane and from B to L, those are parallel. So therefore, we have alternate angles. Remember, these are parallel. They're the same distance apart, 90 degrees between them. All right, so therefore, we get alternate angles. So if the angle of depression is 10 degrees, then the angle, if we're looking up from L, is also going to be 10 degrees. So angle L is equal to 10 degrees. Okay, so that would be a very simple one mark question. Okay, which I'm sure most of you won't even struggle with. Finally, the next one they say calculate the length of KT. Okay, so let's have a look at what KT is on our diagram. All right, we've got K at this point here. That's your car K. So they're asking us for that distance there. All right, so if I just draw it in green, there we go. That's what we're looking for, KT, the one in green. So in order to find KT, you need a little bit of information. You look at your diagram, all right, and you see that you have quite a lot of information formed in this triangle TBK, okay? We know that the length of TB is 25, all right, we know that angle B is 90 degrees. We know that the angle of elevation was 17 degrees. All right, so we've got enough information in that triangle to solve for KT. You can use the sine rule or just simply use um, from your right angle triangle. We can set it up and say, well, what am I looking for? This is the hypotenuse, right? And I've been given the opposite side, opposite to angle K2, so therefore I can say sine of 17, so sine of angle K2 is going to be equal to the opposite side, which is BT, over the hypotenuse, which is the one that they want from us, TK. So sine of 17 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Remember, we are trying to solve for TK. So we can cross multiply. All right, so if I cross multiply, remember we're looking for TK. So I'm going to cross like that, cross multiply that sine of 17 over 1. So I'll get TK times sine 17 is equal to BT. So therefore, so all I'm really doing is I'm rearranging this into a form where it's easy for me to substitute and solve for TK. Whoopsie. Not sure what happened there. Let's just go back. And there we go. The board is getting a little bit excited. All right, so I'm looking for TK, so I'm going to divide both sides by sine of 17. We know that TB from the diagram, remember that was the tower, so that length was given to us as 25, so I can replace that with 25. We're dividing by sine 17. Okay, and now the best part, the part you all love, you can whip out your calculators to see what your answer for TK is. So we had 25 divided by sine 17. And we got an answer of 85,51. All right. So 85,51 is the distance between the point T and K. So that length there, 85,51. All right, and then quickly, guys, the last one here is we had to calculate the distance between the two cars. So that means we need to work out KL. How do we do that? Well, it's a good thing that this question was in parts because it actually builds up. We needed that length TK in order to find KL because now if you look at this triangle TKL, all right, so this triangle here, we have the length of TK. We have, um, we have this angle L here, which is 10 degrees. We just need one more angle to be able to use the sine rule in this triangle. So what do we do? We can use angles in a straight line to work out K1. So 180 minus 17 will give us K1. Let's have a quick 
quick look what that is. 180 minus 17. So that's 163. All right, and if K1 is 163, if I want to use the sine rule in this triangle TKL, and I'm looking for KL, that means, uh, uh, that means I'm going to need the angle opposite side KL, which is this one, angle T2. So because I've got K1 and L, I can use angles in a triangle to work out T2. So it's going to be 180 minus 163 plus 10. So it's 180 minus... Basically, 173, which is just going to be 7 degrees. So T2 is 7. So therefore, using the sine rule in that triangle, I'm just going to quickly set it up for you. We're going to get KL over sine of 7 is equal to the side that we've got, or we've just worked out, which is TK over... So we have TK is going to be... Um, We've got KL over 7, and we've got TK over sine of 10, sorry. All right. Okay, so then we can put all of that. Let's just simplify that a little bit. So we've got KL, the one we're looking for, is going to be equal to, all right, so if you're trying to find KL, you need to cross multiply. It's going to be TK times sine of 7 all over sine 10. So TK sine 7 all over sine 10. We've already worked out that TK is 85,51. So we put that in. And the last thing we need to do is just plug all of this into our calculator. All right, so let's just see what we get. So it's 85.51 times sine of 7. All right, and then we divide all of that by sine of 10. And we get an answer of 60, 0,01. All right, so what that tells us is the distance between the two cars, KL, so if we go back to the diagram, that's what we were looking for, the distance between the two cars, AL, we worked out to be 60,01. All right, so we went over this very, very quickly, and I know that we did, but it is um, one of the more basic 2D tricks, and I hope that this sets sort of the platform so that you guys can actually go ahead, revise, and hopefully this will help you with the basic uh, 2D trig problems. I'm going to quickly cross to Ty in our last minute or so to see if mm. there's anything we can help anyone with. Yes. Princess wanted to find out. Please, please, please. Number three, if you could go over it again, I'm just a little bit lost. So I think maybe she just got a bit confused by in some of the areas. Okay, so number three was the one on... Um, I think this is the number three she's talking about, although mm. it says number two here. This was proving the identity. Um, I think so. All right, so we're going to assume, Princess, that this is the one you're talking about. And I'm going, to, because we are running out of time, I'm going to very quickly just explain the theory of what we did. We had to prove that the left-hand side was equal to the right-hand side. All we did was, in the first bracket, we changed tan squared to sine squared over cos squared. And then we found an LCD, right? In the second bracket, we found our LCD of sine squared. And then once we got the LCDs in both the brackets, we basically just simplified. Okay, and when we simplified, what it came out to was the top, the numerator simplified to just sine squared times 1 minus cos squared, and then the other bracket just simplified to 1 over sine squared. And remember, the whole thing was divided by sine squared over cos squared, which was tan squared, so we just kept that the whole way through. We simplified a little bit, cancelled all of the common things that we could, and eventually we got everything to divide out quite nicely and just give us one. But the main thing, guys, is remember when you deal with identities, sometimes you can let the, the question actually lead you. In this one, you have to work with the, with the side where more information is given, and that's what we did here. Okay, so we worked where more information is given and where we could actually do more to the equation. So I think um, that's it for today. So I'm going to hand back to Ty and say cheers, and I will see you next week. 
All right, guys, I hope you had a nice session. I know that it was super intense and there's a lot going on and there's changing people. I know, guys, I know, guys, we're just trying something out. But guys, 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 that doesn't mean you still cannot post on the page and ask for help. Wherever you guys are lost, if you need help, remember this page is for you guys. It's for notes. It's for your backup whenever you need anything. And I will be finding my witness. But for now, I'm going to say, guys, take care and we'll see you soon.